In this video, I'm going to show you how to control an Arduino Uno using a Python script running on a Raspberry Pi. That is, the Raspberry Pi acts as the master and the Arduino Uno acts as a slave. If you want to follow along exactly as in this video, you're going to need a push button to act as an analog input and an LED so that we can actually do something based off of our analog input, a 10,000 ohm pull down resistor, and a 1000 ohm resistor, as well as some wires. You're going to need the Uno and the uh, Raspberry Pi, of course, and a cable that connects the two together so that we can establish serial communication. The way we're going to wire this up is we are going to connect the push button to the breadboard and bring 5 volt and ground to the respective rails. We're going to put the 10,000 ohm resistor between the button and ground to serve as a pull down resistor. The push button will also be connected to digital 8 on the Arduino Uno, and then we're going to plug in our LED with its resistor and connect digital 7 to the LED and bring the rest of it to ground. So now we're going to have to do a few things on our Raspberry Pi. First we're going to want to open up an instance of our terminal. I have mine open here. Type in sudo app-get update, and this will take a moment. Now that that's done, we can install an instance of Arduino IDE. So type in sudo app-get install Arduino, and yes, you want to install it. I already have mine installed, so this didn't take very much time at all. Now we're going to have to download some files to be able to establish serial communication between the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. Navigate to your downloads folder. My downloads folder here is empty. And we're now going to download two packages off of GitHub that allow us to establish serial communication between the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. Links are in the description, but you can also type it out, git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash nanpy slash nanpy. This will download the software needed that we will install to allow Python to stream commands. But we also need to set up our Arduino so that they can receive them. And so type in git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash nanpy slash nanpy dash firmware. And this is the firmware that will be uploaded to the Arduino to receive streaming communication from the Raspberry Pi. So let's get started on the Arduino end of things. We have our nanpy dash firmware folder there. Let's navigate into it. We have this file here called configure.sh, and this is going to pre-populate a configuration file that we will then be able to upload into the Arduino. So let's execute that now by typing in dot slash configure.sh. What this did is created a configuration file in the NanPy directory here. So let's navigate into that directory. And if we blow this up, we'll see a whole bunch of files, including configuration.h. Let's open up that file with nano cf, cfg.h. In here, there's a whole bunch of different options that you can choose from. Some of them are enabled by default, some of them are not. If, let's say, we wanted to control a servo, like it so, says here, use servo, we will want to change that 0 to a 1. And then you just exit out and you save it. Now, I don't have a servo in this demonstration, but that's just for your reference in case you want to experiment with more advanced components. Now, I'm going to navigate it back a couple folders here and back to where we have NumPy-Firmware, and we're going to copy this directory over to our sketchbook for our Arduino. So type in cp-avr NumPy-Firmware slash and then we're going to copy it to our sketchbook slash libraries. This will copy everything over into the sketchbook for our Arduino such that we can upload it to our uh, Arduino using the Arduino IDE. So let's go over and do that right now. Let's open up the Arduino IDE and then click on File, Sketchbook, libraries and we see the NanPy firmware right there, NanPy, click that and then we're going to upload this to our Arduino. 
Excellent. Now the software is uploaded to the Arduino, and the Arduino is sitting idle, waiting for commands from the Raspberry Pi so it can do something. Let's close down the Arduino IDE and navigate back to our terminal here. So we've uploaded the NumPy firmware, and now we need to install NumPy on our Raspberry Pi such that Python knows that the library exists. Let's navigate into that NumPy folder. And here you'll see the setup.py file. Setup it should be pretty straightforward. Just type in sudo python3 setup.py install if you are using Python 3. If you're more familiar with uh, Python 2 or 2.7, then just type in sudo python setup.py install. I will be proceeding with Python 3. Once that's done, let's navigate back to our root directory. Here, let's uh, move that up for you. So we're in our root directory now, and now we're going to navigate to our desktop, where we are going to create a folder called NanPy. And we're going to navigate into that folder NanPy, and of course there's nothing in here because we haven't done anything yet in this folder. Let's navigate back to the Raspberry Pi desktop. And here on the Raspberry Pi desktop, we're going to open up an instance of Python 3 idle. And we're going to save this file that we're about to create in that NumPy directory on our desktop. So here we are in the NumPy directory. And we're going to call it buttonled.py. Creative name, right? The first thing we're going to have to do is import from the NumPy module that we just installed. So from NumPy import and we're going to import the Arduino API and serial manager. Then from time we're going to import the sleep function. Now we know that our LED is connected to pin 7 and we know our button is connected to pin 8 or at least the data line is connected to pin 8 and right now the LED is off and the button is currently pulled low, represented by the zero. The first thing we want to do is try establishing a connection to the Arduino. So connection is equal to serial manager function, and this will automatically find whatever Arduino is connected to it. If you have multiple Arduinos, you're going to have to specify which connection in particular you want to connect to. Then we're going to create an instance of the Arduino API object. So A is equal to Arduino API, and the connection in particular that we're going to be using is the connection called connection, right? Simple. Of course, if this doesn't work out, then we're going to have to print an error. So we'll say failed to connect to Arduino, and that will indicate to us whether or not our wiring and connections are good to the Arduino. Now the rest is pretty straightforward in terms of how we're going to use this code to communicate with the Arduino. It's kind of like writing in the Arduino IDE itself. We need to go through the same motions as we would before. So for example, we need to set up the pin modes as if we were in the Arduino IDE because as far as the Arduino knows, it doesn't know. It doesn't know what these pins are yet, so we need to establish that. So using the object A, which represents our Arduino, we're going to say pin mode of our LED pin is going to be an output, and the pin mode of our button pin is going to be an input. Note the A, uh, because the, this output is like a, a, a associated with the Arduino, just like how pin mode function is associated with the Arduino. So now we're going to try something new. And what this is, is going to be a large true loop that just keeps on repeating indefinitely. And it's going to pull what the state of the button is. So if we were to want to read the button before, we would use digital read and we would be reading the button pin. So then we're going to say our button state is blah, and that is the button state. And then we're going to check if the button state is pressed, that is, if it is one or true, then if the LED state is true, we're going to write 
we're going to digital write our LED pin to be, and you can probably guess it, low. Because if it's true, that means it's on. And if it's on, we want to turn it off. This is how this program is going to run. So you click the button, it turns it off. You click the and it's off. If it's off and you click the button again, it turns it on. So then we're going to have to set our LED state to equal to false. And then we're going to print LED off. And then we'll just sleep for one second. Otherwise, it'll move too fast for us. And we'll start having issues with our presses. Well, if the LED is false, uh, sorry, true, then we go through this. Otherwise, if it's not true, then it's false. And if it's false, then we're going to want to write that LED pin to be high to turn it on. And then our LED state will be turning true. And then we'll just print LED on. And then again, we will sleep for one second. Right? Now, the reason I put this in, uh, why I'm trying this is, let's say if we crash out of this program, like we, we keyboard exit, we don't want to be leaving that pin high. So if we were to crash out, we would digital write the LED pin to be low. And that way everything turns off in our uh, circuit here. So that's all there is to it. So it kind of looks a little bit like you're writing in C, but you know that you're writing in Python because you don't have to write the semicolons. And you can do a whole bunch of Pythonic stuff in the background while still using your Arduino for whatever nuts and bolts type functions you need to do. So let's give that a save. Now, just looking at this code here, I noticed that there is an A missing in our serial manager. So before we go ahead and try executing this, let's correct that. So our Arduino is set up and it's waiting for us to send some message to it. So let's go ahead and get that going. Moving back to the terminal here in our desktop NandPy folder, we should have saved our button LED.py file. To execute this, just like any other Python file, type in python3 button LED.py. So now what it's doing is it's updating very quickly here, saying that the button state is zero or low right now. And we can see here that the LED is off. Now, if I click this button here, we see the LED come on and we saw a one there for just a, a moment and it said the LED is on and the LED will stay on. And if we click the button again, there we see LED off and it goes back to our button state of zero after one. So you can keep on clicking on and off and here we have it where the Arduino is doing practically no thinking at all, relatively speaking. Like, I mean, the Arduino doesn't have any unique code added to it. Uh, it's just the Raspberry Pi that is controlling the Arduino, telling the Arduino what to do as a slave. So there you have it, how to establish master-slave type communication between a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino using the NanPi software I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.